Deborah King and I'm going to show you my new isolation series and so you can get an idea of what I've been working on. This is up in the upper room gallery in Harlan, right up above Coffee Girl. And um, this is about, this series is about at the time that we were in lockdown in March and April and some of the things that I painted and that I thought about during uh, isolation. Um, at first, in that time when we first found out that the schools were canceled and everything was shutting down, kind of had a little panic attack moment and just cried myself to sleep for days and and the last, after the third day of crying, I finally said, God, I, I'm going to go to bed. Mommy's going to go to bed early. And I talked to God and I said, God, I just want to be helpful in this time. I want to have something to give to the world right now and to my own children, but I cannot give them anything if I don't have something from you to give them. And so I said, you need to give me hope. You need to give me something to share. And as I laid there and cried out to him, he gave me ideas for three different paintings. And so I just said, okay, that's what I'm going to do. That's how I'm going to contribute. That's how I'm going to process this and show the world what's going on in, in from my perspective and what God's doing. And so I went downstairs and I painted till three in the morning. And some of these paintings are the ones that I did during that time. So I'm gonna show them to you one at a time and, and explain a little bit of what, where I'm coming from. Um, this is the first one. I was uh, entered a contest that said, what have you, if you had to do a self portrait that showed what you've learned during this isolation, time what would it look like and so this is what I chose to paint oh, so you can see this and this is um, my it's called perspective and during this time I think I have started to see myself differently see the world differently um, when an artist does a painting um, from the world they we, we kind of frame it with our hands and look and say, okay, what's, what's the ratio there? And so it's a picture of me looking through the lens that I have. And I started to see myself in color. I even dyed my hair fun. And, and so this is me in color, me differently, and the way that I see things differently. I've seen myself and my gifts and what I have to give differently. I've seen my family differently. I've really started to see what the things in my life are the most important, what I actually have to have, what is essential in my life and what is extra that I can downsize and not not do anymore um, so this is called perspective so the other things that we learned were essential these are some fun pieces um, these are my toilet paper pieces um, we learned how essential toilet paper is to our lives and how much easier life is when we have the little creature comforts of life so this top one says you don't know what you've got till it's gone. And the whole time I was painting that, I was humming the little song to myself. It was kind of fun. These are just purely fun pieces that I thought, I should hang these in my bathroom because there's a good reminder of um, that God takes care of us. And if we have toilet paper, we are blessed. <clears throat> that he, all the little things. So this one is called blessed. Hold on, let me see if I can. Um, blessed. That's a reminder that we're blessed. And this says thankful for the little things. And there is a book and there is toilet paper. Um, two things that I'm very thankful for during this time of isolation where we didn't have a lot of extra things to do. So the next one I'm going to show you. Um, being online a lot and in isolation and being at home, I came across a story about a man who had gone to prison and um, he had decided that he was going to start worshiping God on his breaks as he walked around the, the exercise time. And he would just start singing to God and worshiping God in his brokenness. And during that time, there was a little flock of birds that he saw that was led by one particular bird, kind of a bluish bird, maybe a starling. And it was... Every time he sang, these birds would swoop around him and they would be there every time he was in worship. And it was a reminder to him <clears throat> that God was with him even in that time where he was isolated and even that time when he was broken. Um, so this is a painting of that. 
<clears throat> my rendition of what that must have been like to worship from inside that prison and to know that these birds are a, ho- a symbol of hope. And that story is down here. Um, if you want to read it, it's also on my, on my blog. Um, it's called Pris- Prison Worship. There's another small piece that I haven't gotten framed up yet that has the pictures of just the little birds on there that remind us that God is in this. God is with us even when we're broken, even when we're limited in how far we can go and what we can do. God's with us and he gives us hope. Um, this little one um, is about, it was just a meditative um, thing. I love swirls. A lot of my work has these swirls. Um, reminding us, reminding me and my heart to reach for, toward the light and to grow. And the greens remind me to reach for the light and to keep growing, even if things look dark. There's these sparkly little things in here that remind me the little gems that we find when we are choosing to grow and to reach toward things that are hopeful. Um, This one also is an abstract piece. I don't do a lot of abstract, but it's really relaxing and fun, and I can just let the Holy Spirit kind of guide me in my worship as I do them. Um, This one is called Joy for the Day. And it's just about living in the grace of one day and finding the joy in that, not worrying about the future. Again, thinking about growing, thinking about the washing of the water of the word of, and friendships. This is about, this part was about the friendships that I have that are helping me grow and the Holy Spirit that's filling me and the growth that I'm seeing. And it was just a joyful experience of trying to um, be thankful for the little things that I had to enjoy in. This one's called Resilience, and there is a, a tree that is cracked and that is broken and that is dried out and it looks dead. And in the middle, there's a cross here um, that shows that in the middle of that brokenness, something is choosing to grow. Something new was born in the middle of brokenness and it's, it's raining, it kind of looks like tears, it looks like rain, but also during that time of rain, rain can mean different things. Rain can mean tears and sorrow, but can also be water, to water something deep in us that can grow only through that, through sorrow and through hardships. We soak that in to the middle core of us and we choose to let that help us to grow. So this is called resilience. This is coming back from a time of feeling broken and cut down and choosing this new growth that's happening. Um, Here is um, this one up here was thinking about the coronavirus and how a lot of times it affects the lungs. These are kind of, looks a little bit like lungs. It also looks like a tree in spring with the little pink buds. And it was um, trying to, it's called breathe. And um, it was, as I, as I was painting this, I was praying for the people who are struggling to breathe. I was praying for refreshing and newness to happen, just like in spring, that there would be healing. The pink is healthy, a healthy lung. There's a heart in the middle. Um, that there would be healing for those that have a hard time breathing. And um, that hope would come to us like spring comes. We were waiting for spring. We were waiting for the rain to heal our nation and our world um, and for people to be able to really breathe and to breathe in God's presence, to breathe in that that gives us life. This is one of the paintings that came to mind when I was in that hard place. I was thinking about how we're all in this together. We're all experiencing it differently, but we're all feeling this. And what can I do? And I just imagine my street. So this is a street scene. Um, All these houses of people who are stuck inside, who can't get out and can't fellowship and can't encourage one another. And how do we reach out to each other in this time? So this first house um, has a little God is speaking through this cloud. It's raining. It's dark. They're all in this time of of rain and darkness and in a storm. And God's reaching down, showing his love for the world to the person in this house. And this house says, really, God, you love, I'm so excited, you love the world. And then they they start to share this love and their peace with with their neighbors, kind of on a virtual 
uh, way. Um, they put hearts in their window. On, they wrote some things on their sidewalk, hope and um, God loves you. And they're sharing it with this house, which is sharing it with the next house and with the next. And as they share, this rainbow appears. There's some hope showing up. As we're sharing these and as we're connecting virtually, um, and the sun is starting to peek out from these clouds, that it's giving hope to these people. And um, each house is choosing to share uh, in different ways with the hearts and the togetherness and the writing on their streets. And so this was a picture. Um, this one's called Sharing Hope. And it starts out, as I painted, it started as a gloomy day and it started very slowly. I added, the spring is coming. The flowers are starting to come out. Um, the sun is coming out, the rainbow is coming as we're sharing hope with each other. The last one is this one up here. This one is called Me and My House, and it's a couple scriptural references for this. One of them, if I thought of the Passover, where the Israelites are stuck in their houses because the angel of death is coming over and, and taking um, the lives of people inside and, and they were told put blood on the doorpost of your house to seal it that you are gods and the angel of death will not come in your house and so here's the blood on the doorpost and I put it in this in the um, shape of a cross because this points to the blood of Jesus this points to a future time in the Bible where it talks about that Jesus's blood saves us and it's um, also me and my house is a reference to Joshua that says Choose for this day who you will serve, but for me and my house, we will, we will serve the Lord. And it's not meant to say that your relationship with God will protect you from a virus, because you might still get a virus. You might still die of something, but it's, it's just to show this is who I belong to. I belong to Jesus, and the blood on my doorpost reminds me that no matter how this thing turns out, I get to be with Jesus, whether it's in life or in death and that I am his and that he is mine. With me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord no matter what happens. Even if it's dark, there's darkness around. This happened in a time of darkness. Um, and that swirl is like this angel passing by um, that God has good things for us and that God is with us and we are his. So this is my isolation series and I hope you have time to come by and see it and to read some of these things. They're also posted um, on my blog at um, dkingsdesign.weebly.com. That's my website, and you can subscribe to my blog, and I go into more detail about all these things that I mentioned to you and the, the different pieces. I have, um, this is my September show in October. I have another show coming up, so stay tuned for that one. I just thought I'd show you. It's so nice to see things up on the wall and framed. Um, it looks much nicer than just seeing the picture, but nice to see them kind of um, all ready to go. Um, come up to the Upper Room Gallery if you're in Iowa. There's lots of, there are a lot of vendors that have some really nice things, some artists and some uh, antiques and things, so come up here if you want to see these in person. So I hope you have a good day and check out my website for other works that I'm up to that I'm doing at dkingsdesign.weebly.com. Thanks.